Here we go. Oh yeah, you can see straight away, look at that. Okay, so case testing, episode three. Today we have the Corsair 4000X. I did say in the last episodes, I did say it was gonna be the 4000D. I did think it was the 4000D, it's not, it's the X. The D has got uh, a mesh front, the X has got a glass front. However, this is what we've got. I'm sorry, uh, I'll try to get a 4000D for a, a future episode. Uh, but out of the box, it comes with these three beautiful RGB Corsair fans at the front, uh, but no exhaust. Anyway, just the three uh, fans at the front, so that's gonna be interesting. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna test it out the box with the three fans at the front. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick an exhaust on there, see how that changes things. Then what I'm gonna do is put two more exhausts on the top um, and see again how that changes things. We're gonna be stress testing the CPU, the GPU to 100%. Uh, we're gonna be taking temperatures at the front and the back of the case to see how the different fan configurations affect the air temperature inside the case. And then we're gonna blow some fog through the case. Fog machine's not on, doesn't matter. And then we're gonna blow some fog through the case so we can actually see what's going on with the airflow uh, and, and see kind of what direction it's going in um, and, and make sure that the airflow is nice inside the case. Uh, if you didn't see the previous episodes, uh, we've done the NZXT H510, that was episode one. And we've also done the Lian Li O11 Dynamic, that was episode two. Uh, check out the cards, they will be uh, on there. Go look, look at those episodes, really, really interesting. But today, it is the Corsair 4000X. Let's get started. So as always, we're gonna start running the Fermark GPU stress test and CPU burner stress test. This will push the CPU and GPU to 100% um, and then we can start checking for some temperatures. It's not kind of real world, it does push it a lot harder than when you're actually gaming so these temperatures probably will be a lot higher than when you're gaming um, but what it does is it gives us a good idea of how the fans are working and the air temperature actually inside the case. So you can see this is the GPU temperature graph, it's going up, we just need that to become like a little bit of a steady line then we know that the temperatures are steady um, and that gives us the best opportunity to start testing the air movement inside the case. So we're just going to test it out of the box to begin with, with the three fans at the front. Uh, this is a positive air pressure uh, configuration, meaning that the more air is being pulled in than is being sucked out. So it's just relying on air pressure inside the case from the intake to push air outwards. So we've gotten to some pretty steady temperatures there. The CPU is 82 degrees uh, and the GPU is 89 degrees. This is in Celsius because uh, we're in the UK, we record in Celsius. So we are using the Ryzen 5 1600 and the RX 570 GPU. Uh, they are older, so they do tend to get a bit hotter than like a, you know, um, maybe what you like but we are stress testing it's at 100 percent so we can expect some higher temperatures so let's see what the temperature is like inside the case so as you can see room temperature is 19.9 degrees ah oops 32.2 32.3 so 32.45 32.7, it's going up still. 32.8 we'll call it at the front. And then back of the case, pop that in there. I wanna try and get it just kind of in front of the CPU, just above the GPU. 38 and rising. So this is the problem of not having an exhaust, is uh, you know, you're relying on just the movement of the positive air pressure to push that heat out and really you need the exhaust to be extracting that heat from your case that's why the air temperature is what 41 41.5 i'll call it at that 41.5 that is fairly warm to be fair um i do think that it will benefit from having an exhaust at, at the back so it's time for the fun part which is the fog test so as you can see, the, the fans are pulling air in. It's kind of vortex in here, which is quite cool. 
Uh, that's just around the uh, CPU fan. I guess as the cooler air is hitting the colder air, it, you're starting to get a lot of turbulence there. You can see that the bottom fans are feeding the GPU, but also you can see the GPU fans are pulling air in from the back as well. What is quite interesting, because there's no exhaust, you can see that the CPU fan is actually pulling some air in from the back there too. All of, all of this really is coming from the GPUs, pulling uh, air in and exhausting it out the sides. Let me push some more in and see what else we can see. So yeah, if you look at the CPU fan there, you can see as it comes in, it's kind of getting drawn in uh, to the CPU there. I mean, as you can see, it's, it's fairly slow moving, but the vast majority of it is getting exhaust, exhausted out the top. It's just a lot of kind of air that's not really doing anything over here. I mean, it is moving, but it's not exactly turbulent. And as always, the most amount of um, movement is right in front of the CPU and underneath the GPU. Yeah, you can see kind of like how thick the air is here. It's just that cool, cool air is hitting that wall of like hot air over here and just kind of like hanging around a little bit until it starts to filter through into this like really turbulent area. Um, which is where all the heat from the GPU and the um, intake for the CPU fan is pulling it all around the place. So what we're going to do now is move on to the next fan configuration where we'll keep the three at the front, we'll put one at the back and see how having an exhaust can affect uh, this sort of out of the box configuration. So I've put the exhaust fan in at the back. So what we've got now is it's still a positive pressure because we've got three at the front intaking air and we've got one at the back, which is exhausting that air out. So what we should get is probably a similar temperature, air temperature at the front of the case, but at the back of the case, I think that the air temperature should be lower because we do have that exhaust pulling all that hot air out. And I think that the flow of air should be much better as well. So as you can see, the, the temperature is fairly steady now. Uh, there is a little bit of variance here and there, but it is basically along one line. Uh, so the GPU is at 88, uh, which is like one degree less than it was in the previous test. But the CPU is at 76, which is a good four or five degrees lower than it was in the previous test, which is interesting. So the room temperature has gone up by about half a degree. Um, but it is still fairly stable. 20.5, so fairly steady. So I'm going to take T1, which is the top temperature, and start to grab some temps from inside the case. 32.7. Uh, so again, just trying to get it in front of the CPU fan and above the GPU without actually touching anything. This is, this is weird, man, because I expect the temperature at the back to be higher than the front. I mean, maybe not significantly, but definitely higher. So looking at the temps, they're actually very, very similar at the front and at the back, which tells me that putting the exhaust fan in there is actually way better for airflow. You can see that there's, um, you know, that all the hot air that was gathering here before is swiftly exiting um, the, the case, which is exactly what we want. That's the sort of airflow we're looking for. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna put the fog through the case, see what the air actually looks like as it's going through. Here we go. Starting to come through there. That'll do. Oh yeah, you can see straight away, look at that. That's having a really, really good effect. And you can see that where this was like basically like a wall before, it's a lot more turbulent now, which means that the air is moving a lot easier. It's not, um, it's not sort of like hitting that brick of hot air and, and kind of stagnating around here. It is actually flowing through because the exhaust is pulling it through. What that's doing is it's taking all of that hot air temperature inside the case and just getting rid of it, which is exactly what we need. So yeah, we've got this area now filled up with smoke. You can see it's exiting through that exhaust really, really well. Um, and you can also see how it's feeding the CPU fan. So the air cooler is getting a lot of great cold air in there. And you can even see at the bottom uh, it coming through and feeding the GPU. We can still see 
that the GPU is taking um, some air in uh, from the back as well. So just the, the fan pressure is pulling air from there as well as the cool air getting pushed in from the fans at the front. So that, that is a much, much better fan configuration in terms of having a steady temperature throughout the case. And just in terms of seeing the airflow go through, you can see that there's cold air coming in. It's replacing the hot air that is getting pulled out by that fan there. So just by adding one extra fan, huge positive impact. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put two more fans in, both at the top. I don't have any more Corsair fans. So what I'm gonna be using are these Cooler Master Sickle Flow fans. Um, which are they're still 120s, uh, it's slightly different to the Corsair ones, but it should show us fairly accurately uh, how the airflow is working inside of there. I wish I had two more Corsair fans, I just don't, so it's gonna have to be cooler master. Uh, but these are the Sickle Flow 120 ARGB fans. I do actually rate these fans, um, that's why I'm using them in this test, I guess. So CPU temperature is at 75 degrees, which is a one degree, oh no, it's gone up to 76. Same as the last test, essentially, but slightly cold, cooler um, than the first one. GPU is 88. So again, exactly the same as the previous. Oh, I'll jump up to 89 now, of course it has. Uh, 89 for your GPU. So as you can see, I have put, if you look this way, the two fans at the top, uh, three at the front, one at the back. Let's see what it does. Room temperature, which is 20.7 degrees. So slightly warmer than the other tests. It is getting a bit warmer in here, but obviously we've got a computer run at 100%, so it is gonna get slightly warmer. What I'm gonna do is check the front temp. So we're 30 degrees and rising ever so slightly. 30.05. Let's give it a couple of minutes. 30.08, let's call it at that. Oh, of course not. 30.09, so it's about 31 degrees-ish. Okay, so... 34.5, 34.6, let's call it 34.5. No, let's call it 34.6. Yeah, 34.6. In terms of, terms of temps, having the two fans at the top actually made the front of the case cooler but the rear of the case is actually slightly warmer than just having one exhaust. So what we'll do now is we'll get some fog in there and actually see what the air's doing. So we can still see as air is coming in, it is getting drawn into the GPU really effectively, uh, which is what we want. Um, and you can see as the air's coming in, it is getting drawn into the CPU fan cooler as well. Exhausted really well out the back. What is interesting though is with the top ones, you can kind of see the air is coming in here and some of it is getting pushed out of the top before it even gets over here. Um, which is probably why we have a bit of a cooler temperature at the front. It just hasn't got enough time to hang around. Let me completely fill. So you're aware as before the air was kind of like hanging around here a little bit. You can see that the, the movement here from this middle fan is going up towards there and then from this top fan it, it's just not hanging around in this area as much as it was before uh, it's a lot more turbulent it is getting sucked up into this fan here it is getting sucked up into that fan there so it this neutral pressure does have um, some fairly good movement in there i think i prefer it when it just had the three at the front and the one at the back to be honest so it's kind of bothering me a little bit that on the last test where we had three at the front, two at the top and one at the back, the rear temperature of the case was just that little bit higher uh, than just having one exhaust rather than the two at the top. So what I want to do is just try one more configuration where I just take one of the top fans out. What I'm trying to do is to stop that cold air getting sucked straight out and try and encourage the intake air to sort of reach the GPU and CPU before it gets exhausted. So I'm gonna keep the exhaust on the top here, keep the exhaust on the side there, just to see if there's a difference uh, in what's happening. Right, room temperature, 20.6 degrees. 
which is pretty much the same as it has been throughout. What I'm going to do now is just take this and put it at the front again. It's about 32.8, so we can see that by removing that fan at the top at the front, it has made the front of the case slightly warmer. 32.7, it was 30.9 with the previous test. However, it's the back of the case where I'm trying to reduce the temperature a little bit. So I'm going to write that in at 32.8. So in the previous test, the rear of the case was 34.5. Let's see what this is saying now. 32.2, calling it. So yeah, we can see actually by removing one of the fans at the top and just having a single exhaust, the air temperature inside is relatively steady within a, a couple of points of a degree. And actually it's slightly cooler uh, at the back, which is kind of what we want because that's where all the hot stuff is. So again, you know, we can definitely see the fog feeding the GPU fans there. So that's working perfectly. And what we can also see is the air here isn't escaping out the top as quickly as it was. And we do have a flow of air feeding the, both the exhaust, but also the CPU as well. And what isn't happening that was happening with the previous configurations with the two fans at the top is the air that immediately comes in isn't getting immediately exhausted. But I actually think with this particular case, the best use case uh, for the top would probably be with an AIO. Uh, so if you had a dual fan AIO that's cooling your CPU, I'd absolutely put it at the top there uh, because then you almost want this cold air escaping much quicker through the radiator of the AIO, so it's cooling the, the coolant liquid inside the AIO. With an air cooled system, that's not what you want, but with an AIO cooled system, that is absolutely what you want. For me, um, actually a great case for both air cooling, and it'd probably be very good for uh, AIO as well, um, if you put the AIO at the top. Um, so yeah, I really rate that case, I'm quite impressed. Let me know in the comments which case you want to see next. If we've got it, we'll review it. If we don't have it, we'll try to get it in. Um, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more of these videos. Hit the notification bell so you know when they're happening. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like it. And like I say, get in the comments. Let me know which case you want next. Let me know what you think of this case. And yeah, just let me know if you like this new series of ours. Case testing, airflow testing got a lot more tests that we want to do if you have a specific test that you want to see or you want something testing just let me know and i'll see what i can do thanks for watching